Hey, welcome back. Today I am at I-29 Speedway, just outside of Omaha. I have brought the Sprinzel Sebring Coupe out here to test it for its first time on track. I don't need to worry about doing some engine tuning. I just need to find out how the whole system is going to work. I need to find out how the car is going to handle, whether the car is going to be reliable, and find out things such as, is the car going to overheat? Are we going to have any temperature problems with anything? Like I said, this is the first time this car has ever been driven on the track. It's not completely in full race spec yet. I don't have all of the safety equipment installed that we'll need to race the car, but we have everything together to mechanically test it on track. Let's take a look. Found out a couple days ago that I don't think the generator is working, so I am going to charge it up between every run. I was also going to upgrade the ignition system to something more reliable with top loaded cap but the coil that I need did not show up so this is still a screw on type coil so I was not able to put that on and test it but we can do all the testing of that on the dyno later this car does have an original radiator but we do have an oil cooler mounted up here so it will be interesting to see what kind of temperatures we can maintain moving back on the car one of the other new features we just mounted a tillet racing seat this is a full carbon seat with new crow racing harnesses. The fire system has not arrived yet, so I have temporarily just mounted a fire extinguisher over there, but a full fire system will be put in the car. And we still need to figure out something on the fueling. This car does have an ATL fuel cell, but the venting for the fuel system is not working uh, well enough that we can just dump fuel down there. We're gonna have to figure out a better venting system Beneath that Aston style cap is a long hose that goes down to the tank and we'll need to push the valve down in order to put fuel in it and we need to work out a better system for that. We also brought down a Miata and we are testing my dad's Mustang Boss 302S which now has a new Ford Illuminator motor in it. It's nice to be able to have track days like this where we can just come and test cars out, not have to worry about traffic, we can go out whenever we want. Just make a lap or two for testing, come back in, or we can go out and run an endurance test if we want to. I've got some more work to do, and then we'll get it out on track. I'm going to take the field wire off the generator and try to repolarize the generator, see if that gets it to work. Maybe it just lost its polarity from sitting around all winter with the kill switch disconnected. I hooked up a voltmeter and we don't have any battery power here at the generator, so that's a problem. This car does have a solid state regulator on it. I'm going to have to troubleshoot this, see if we have the problem here. So we do have power here on the A terminals, but we don't have power coming out on the D terminal, which goes to our dynamo. Fortunately, I did not bring another regulator with me. I might hotwire this uh, so that the generator can run all the time or I'll just have to charge it up in between sessions. I'll let you know what I do. Well, I took this wire off and then I reconnected it and everything started working. So there must be a bad connection in here. I want to get some crimped terminals on the ends of these wires instead of just sticking the wires in and tightening them down. I think that would be a lot better solution on a race car to make sure that we have good contact with everything.
I just came in from my first session out. The speedometer's not working. We never did hook up the oil temperature. Those are things that I knew about. We don't have a speedometer cable that fits this car yet. Uh, the car stayed right at 180 degrees like it should have, so that's good. The main issue is that it's very twitchy in the rear and the corners. This car does have adjustable shocks on it, so let's try adjusting that a little bit. And I think we also have a pan hard bar back at the shop, so I think we need to throw that on. That will help keep the axle in place and get rid of some of that twitchiness. If we come down here in front of the rear tires, we can see the shocks right there. These are Armstrong adjustable shocks. If I wanna change the settings on them, you can see it's just moving this dial like this. There is a lot of clicks. If I remember right, I think it's like 18 different selections that I can make. So I'm gonna adjust these and see if we make the car any better. Forgot to give you an update after the last time I was out those shock adjustments did make a big difference I did just go out again after checking the car over and the car is getting more and more fun the more that I drive it I have a few things to work on when we get back to the workshop but if you want to see me race this car and see more videos on this car uh, leave a comment below and let me know